dear professional students you are welcome to another section on the fees income valuation and analysis and in this session we want to look at the risk measurement and to start with risk management is one of the crucial process that is being used to make investment decision so the process involves identifying and analyzing the amount of risk involved in an investment and either accepting that risk or mitigating it. Some of these common measures of risk include standard deviation, vector, value at risk, and conditional value at risk. Let's start from the first one, the standard deviation. Standard deviation measure the dispersion of data from its expected value. That is what standard deviation measures. Is when something is at variance. You want to label level of variability of certain data from the expected value. The expected value is the mean. You want to know how the data are actually dispatched away from what? From the average with the center. So the standard deviation is used in making an investment decision to measure the amount of historical volatility associated with an investment relative to the annual rate of return. This concept, the standard deviation, also indicates how much the current return is deviating from the expected historical normal returns. For example, a stock with high standard deviation experiences high volatility and therefore a higher level of risk associated with the stock. So when the standard deviation is high, it means there is a volatility and volatility is about the risk which is associated with that stock that's uh, about standard deficient and for those that are interested only in potential losses while ignoring possible gain the semi deficient is essentially only look at the standard deficient to the downside to the what to the downside if you are only interested in the potential losses while ignoring the possible gain. Understand? If you lost your own loss, no loss. So, the semi division essentially look at what? Only only look at the standard division to the down side. And what is semi division? Because whenever we say something, we have to clarify it. Now. I made I made mention of semi deflation. Semi deflation. So semi deflation by meaning is a method of measuring the below mean fluctuation in the return on investment. It's used to measure what? It is used to measure the, the below mean. Below mean fluctuation. In the return on investment, on investment, that is what it means. And this semi division refers the worst case performance to be expected from the risky asset. I mean, this semi division is an alternative measurement to standard division or variance. And unlike those measures, I mean. Deviation looks at the negative price fluctuation. That is why it said those below mean. No, for the for mean is the average. So those income that below mean is negative. So we want to look at the negative price fluctuation. As a result, is the most often used to evaluate the down risk of an investment. Understand? So that is a semi deviation. So, semi division is used to measure the dispersion of an asset price from an unobserved mean or target value. So, the one that is above the mean, you not bother. But one that is below the mean that will give you negative is where you look at the dispersion from it. So, in this sense, dispersion means the extent of variation from the mean price. So, that is a mean deflation. And where we are coming from, which is a standard deflation we said for those that are interested only in the potential losses why ignoring the possible gain no those ones that are above the mean 
they are the gain. For the one that are below the mean, they are the losses. So if one is interested in losses and not the gain, so is it the mean division that we look into? Because it's the mean division that try to consider the below mean frustration in the uh in the in the investment or uh, on in the return or uh, on the return or uh, on investment so that is a uh, about standard deviation what we use to know is to find the dispersion from the average or the, or the expected value now the next one is sharpe ratio another risk measurement is what is sharpe ratio and sharpe ratio measure the performance as adjusted by the associated risk. The performance has done what? As adjusted by the associated risk. And this is done by removing the rate of return on the risk free, such as our treasury bond from the expected rate of return. You know, the expected rate of return, which is the uh, expected rate of return minus risk free all over divided by what investment standard deviation investment standard deviation and this serves as an indicator of whether an investment return is due to wise investing or due to assumption of excess risk the variation of this is what is known as sortino ratio the variation of sharpe ratio is what is sortino ratio and sortino ratio removes the effect of upward price movement on the standard deviation to focus on the distribution of returns that are below the target or below the prior return. Those ones that are below the what? That are below the, the mean value. So the certain ratio replaces the risk free with required or required return in the numerator of the formula. Instead of risk free, it substitutes with what? Required rate of return, making the formula the return on portfolio less the required return so it will now be return on portfolio minus require return divided by the target addition of return below the target or require return so division of target be, you know the required return is the mean those ones that are below the mean is what the Sotino put uh, in the denominator. Let me come again. I said Sotino tried to replace the risk free with the required rate of return. Understand? So this is required rate of return and this is risk portfolio. Let me adjust this one. This is required rate of return and this is risk free. And this one now it replaces risk free with the required rate of return. And put portfolio return minus final rate of return from the stock, or divided by uh, divided by the distribution of returns below the target or required rate of return. Another variation of SAPE is trainer ratio. You have trainer ratio that uses the portfolio beta or correlation of the portfolio as with the rest of the market. So beta is a measure of investment volatility. And risk as compared with the overall market. So the goal, the goal of trainer ratio is to determine whether an investment, or sorry, an investor is being compensated for taking additional risk above the inherent risk in the market. So the trainer formula is the return of the portfolio. Uh, 